Hi, I'm Jamie. <laughs> and I'm John. Uh, this is Crow. And this is Nymeria. And this is our home, Nomi. <laughs> we had always been travelers and adventurers, so we met doing this program called AmeriCorps and Triple C. You travel around the country in, in Chevy vans, <laughs> you know, do community service work with nonprofits, disaster relief. I think that kind of primed us for van life. We sort of fell into the, the nine to five house in the suburbs situation that you're just kind of subtly pushed into, I feel like. We just woke up one day and looked around and realized this isn't what we I wanted. I didn't want this. Yeah. yeah, did you want this? I didn't. <laughs> we were talking about doing one last hurrah before we had kids. One of my best friends, shout out to Collins, because none of this would be a thing without him, probably. He told us to look up the hashtag van life. We found like the typical large accounts, like where's my office now, Idle Theory Bus. We started selling. just selling everything. It took us uh, close to months. eight months, seven, eight months yeah. to sell everything. And we made about 10 grand from selling everything. Yeah. So that was <laughs> a nice beginning. <laughs> This is Nomi. He is a 1996 Chevy Express 1500. Uh, he also goes by Tiara on weekends. We got him for $1,500. He had about 100,000 miles, uh, and we put 15 on him. So the the build, oh, Gymeria. <laughs> The build overall, so like all in, the whole thing was about 10,000. You definitely don't need to spend as much on a build as we did. We just happened to set a $10,000 budget. And when you set a budget, you tend to spend that budget. So if your budget's less, then you can definitely find a way to make it happen. Nomi gets about 15 miles to the gallon, give or take, which is a lot better than I was expecting. Up top, you'll see we have our fantastic vent, which has a rain cover on it because ventilation in the rain is key. You need a rain cover to have that thing open in, in a serious rainstorm. We have 300 watts of Renogy solar panels. This guy right here, which is actually an SAE uh, quick disconnect where we can plug in a fourth solar panel. We basically took a solar extension cord and cut the end off and put a quick connector on and we can just plug it right in. That's charging a 310 amp hour battery bank. We have two 155 amp hour AGM batteries. Since we have a lot of instruments and we have backpacking gear and tools, is we wanted enough space to store all of that. So we built a pretty high up bed platform here. And we just have a ton of storage under here. You'll see we've got a banjo and a guitar, and here's our spare water right here, uh, tools. There's backpacks and a tent shoved back there too. This right here is our extra solar panel, and uh, which just fits right under this platform so we don't have to move everything around to get it out. And we just can pull this right out, um, open the PVC frame and plug it in. Welcome to our home, bitches. <laughs> so when we were building the van, we felt like the stairs right here were just dead space. We built these storage boxes on the doors. This one holds our trash and recycling. This one is all of our dog supplies, so food, accessories, etc. We built as a little table. It does not work outside yet, but when we're inside, it just props up into a little table. I like to call it our Yahtzee table because we play a lot of yachts. We also have a little broom and an umbrella that we literally never use, so we should take that to Goodwill. This is a cajon. When we were building the van, the way that we did our setup, we decided that we wanted an additional seat. So we decided, let's get an instrument. So this is our fridge. It's made by Arb. They're a four by four company. It holds about a week worth of food and a little bit of beer or a week worth of beer and a little bit of food. <laughs> These have been a godsend, just a really cheap shoe holder. And it just holds all of our little tiny things that we don't necessarily have a home for and we don't want to make a large home for. So it gets them out of the way and organized. First off, this artwork is done by the phenomenal Leah McGee. You can find her on Etsy or Instagram at Sunny McGee Art. So this is our pantry. This is all of our dry goods and some wine. We have shelving up top. It's one of our many areas for knickknacks. This is our 
kitchenette. We have a 14 gallon stainless steel tank. We can also access it through the top. We didn't really like the idea of our water sitting in plastic. So we found this on a winemaking website. This is our sink. We got a lot of boat parts for our van build because they're made for smaller spaces and they can normally move around. We got a foot pump. We highly suggest the foot pump because you are way more conscious of the water that you're using and you have free hands. And then it drains into here. We just dump it in its necessary spots every like four to five days probably. So this is all of our storage for kitchen stuff. Can you stand up in here? Yeah, I can. John can't, but I can. <laughs> Propane freaks us out a little bit. We don't have a lot of experience with this and it's this is a really small area. Found out about this. It's an alcohol stove. It runs off of denatured alcohol. Um, it costs about $15 a month for us to run it. We have a lot of storage going on in this van that was really important to us. Some of the smaller things in the back. We have some books right here. This is our battery box that they're sitting on top of. We have our not so everyday necessary items in here. So different shoes, our extras box, so like spare Velcro and twine or whatever. This is our bedroom. <laughs> One thing that we did that was important to us is we have little cubbies on each side of our bed. Here on mine, bunch of books and different journals. Same with John, he has a bunch of books. He also handmade cup holders um, to fit our hydro flasks perfectly, but mine broke. This is our closet. Again, artwork by Leah McGee from Sunny McGee Art. And this is our closet. So we have our clothes in these cubes. One side's all mine, one side's all his. Right now the bed looks a little bit small. Whenever nighttime rolls around though, these are part of the mattress. So we just took a steak knife to our mattress basically and cut it up. These are all separate pieces. I, that was like my non-negotiable thing of like two humans, two dogs, we need a big bed. So insulation was really important to us since we would be traveling year round in all different climates. We made these curtains. They're made out of insul shine. It's a reflective material with batting on the opposite side. We just sewed this dark fabric onto the opposite side of the batting. And they're on hooks so that they can be reversible. Um, so we can reflect the heat out or reflect the heat in. It works extremely well. Let's say the sun's out over here. If we put this side of curtains down, the temperature in here drops by like 10 to 15 percent or degrees <laughs> we did the math <laughs> we have a three quarter inch poly iso foam board in so it's about an r value of five <laughs> and then on the floor we didn't want to lose out on a bunch of head space so we put reflectix down it doesn't really do much but we figured it's better than nothing and then we have cedar on the ceiling so it won't mold and it smells like heaven. We actually, we stained this part, wanting to do like the whole log cabin feel. And then we specifically did not stain inside of our closet so that our clothes smelled like cedar. <laughs> we are on Verizon's unlimited plan. They just offered unlimited data. So we can just hotspot our phones whenever we have cell service. If we don't have cell service, we got this Wii Booster. We turn it on and we can go from one bar to all bars. Saved up quite a bit, just selling all our belongings. We were also freelancing at the time. You know, we had some spare bedrooms, so we were airbnb one of them out for a few months. So we, we built up a lot of savings that we were living off of, but actually just in July, we got to the point where we're covering expenses from income. We have some like online businesses, like web, web design and just, you know, building websites. That we started doing income. all of this before mm -hmm. we hit the road too, so that once we were getting settled into van life, we would have like a good side business going. Mm -hmm. This is right at the point where it's starting to cross over, so. Yeah, we just exciting. had our first month where yeah. like <laughs> our income 
like was higher than our expenses. And we were like, like oh, yeah, get a bottle of wine. Yeah. <laughs> Primarily to make like affiliate income from, you know, just products that we mentioned. And then with our blog specifically, we're just kind of trying to bring all the information that we can find together in one place for other people looking to build their vans. Yeah. So, so when we started building our van, we could find a million and a half YouTube videos on van builds, but there was very limited written work out there. And most of that was specific to one person's van or it was very outdated. So we um, were like, well, what if we created written content then? So we started from the very beginning, like, tried to keep it universal so that anyone could benefit from it. In creating all of this, we were taking additional notes for if we'd ever want to build another van. In general, we really believe in this lifestyle. We think it's a lot of fun. It, it like frees you up to pursue whatever other passions you might have also. Just want to help other people, you know, just get on the road as quickly and easily as possible. So that's kind of our goal of it. You know, it's a cliche that your parents tell you, but you, anything you put your mind to, you can do, and that's absolutely true. You know, once you really realize it within yourself, the possibilities are endless, but you can do anything you want, but you need to, you know, put your mind to it. And put in the work. Yeah, and take small steps each and every day to work towards what you want to do. If you want to run a marathon, just go run down the block, start there. A year or two down the road, you'll turn around and you'll look in the rearview mirror and you'll see all these little steps behind you that, that led you exactly where you wanted to go.